Hi everybody. Today we are here to address the topic of responsibility versus capacity. What on earth does this mean? Well, being a caregiver means that you wear many hats and you accept this unlimited list of responsibilities to care for children and aging parents and your spouse and your grandparents and yourself. And sometimes you are doing all of this at the same time. Well, being able to do all this makes you a pretty amazing person. But what happens when all of these responsibilities, all of these duties involve more complex topics and work and dealing with healthcare systems and insurance companies? And all of a sudden you feel like you're in over your head or you feel that your life is constrained or limited by the expectations of other people that you're doing this and you're going to continue to do it forever. And then you think, oh my gosh, I have no freedom. My dreams have just gone down the drain. Well, the question is, what would you do if you could? Any gap between what we can do and what we need to do in a caregiving situation and what we want to do can cause us to feel overwhelmed and frustrated and sometimes just frightened if we're in over our heads and we think we're going to make a mistake. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what caregivers can do when there is this mismatch between responsibility and capacity and this lack of freedom that is just making your life honestly unpleasant. So stay with me because I'm going to share four tips to manage responsibility versus capacity versus feeling that you have all these limitations in your life that are only making you more stressed out. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I'm a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker with almost 25 years of experience helping caregivers, older adults, patients, people with health care issues navigate care and health care systems. I respond to your questions by creating these videos here on YouTube. So please click below, like this video, follow my channel, add a question below that you'd like me to create a video for, or simply just comment and say, hey, thanks for the video. That helps other people find their way here. You can also go over to my website. There's plenty of free information there. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me by looking for the contact me wording in the top bar, clicking on that and completing a form. If you are a corporation or a group who's looking for a speaker on all these topics, you can also contact me there. Let me know how I can help you and where I can show up. So number one, obvious. Many caregivers take on more responsibility than you can possibly manage. How do you know? You're feeling stressed, overwhelmed. You can't sleep at night. You are exhausted. You're having headaches, you're having stomach aches. This is you. You've taken on too much. It's a situation where learning to set boundaries is no longer optional. It's mandatory for your well-being. So setting boundaries is kind of like this opposite action to stop the train that keeps going this way that says you're going to do more and more. It can help you put boundaries or a framework or constraints to say, I can do this, but I can't do this. There's no more. I should do all of this. It's not possible anymore because you've reached a breaking point. So how do caregivers get here? Well, many caregivers are so helpful and they start doing too much. And what happens is the opposite of what you want. Instead of your elderly parents continuing to do things for themselves, you take on all these things because it's quicker, it's faster, you can get them done, right? But what happens is elderly parents start to become more dependent on you than necessary. They expect you to do more things, which gives you more work. So the big hint here, that light bulb that should be going on up here is never do things that elderly parents or anyone can still do for themselves safely even though it can take them 10 hours and you can get it done in 10 minutes. Doing is good for them. Your elderly parents are retired. They have all day. They have a lot of time. You as the busy caregiver, you don't have a lot of time. 
Don't let this become a time drain. If your responsibilities have become greater than your capacity and your time, you can also have an expectation setting conversation because the expectations of your elderly parents that you built by doing more and more and more and more are no longer practical. You work. Maybe you just got a promotion. You have children. You have a spouse or partner that you want to spend time with. Or maybe you have health issues that you have ignored. You put on the back burner because you were taking care of elderly parents' health issues over here. That doesn't work. It can work for a little bit, but eventually there is a breaking point. Every responsibility that we accept in life has a price tag. I actually have a video on this channel called The High Price That Caregivers Pay. You can look it up. Looks into this topic a lot more. So, some examples. If you take a day off work to care for an aging parent, that price, that cost to you, is a day that you could have taken off to take care of your health and your well-being or spend with your family or your loved ones. If you quit a job to care for elderly parents and you move in with them, major cost. It's your income and it's your future retirement benefits. Plus, you lose a lot of work skills that are going to result in it becoming more difficult for you to get another job. If you've ignored your health, you missed doctor appointments, you should have had a mammogram, now you have breast cancer, that cost of ignoring your health is a huge cost to you because you may have health issues or health diagnoses that you can't, you can't erase, you can't go back, you can't fix them, right? And we all know that caregivers don't like to think of caregiving responsibilities and duty in terms of like, there's a price on this or there's a cost to this. Well, every choice we make has this cause and effect. It's important that we understand the choices that we're making, the short and the long-term consequences. So maybe it's time to visit your responsibilities and your commitments and consider change and make a new plan. Number two, if there are responsibilities you absolutely cannot give up, and this could apply to if you are a legal agent, so a power of attorney, financial or medical, a guardian or conservator, then you chose to do this and you have a legal responsibility. But that does not mean that you cannot find help, hire help. If you feel like there are things you don't know and you're lacking knowledge, doesn't mean that you can't learn about healthcare and medical conditions and health insurance and financial management or legal responsibilities. Now you may have to pay someone, pay a consultant like myself to help you with some of these things or pay an attorney or a CPA or a private care manager or someone else. But those are conversations that you can have with your parents to say, hey, I accepted this legal responsibility. I need help. I'm going to hire somebody. Your money is going to pay for this. Or I'm going to pay for this because I need a sense of confidence that I'm doing the right things. Number three, we all know this one. The emotional aspects of caregiving can be a major energy drain that creates this imbalance between responsibility and capacity and freedom. So the less emotional baggage that we carry, the less attached we are to say, I'm doing this, this is what I expect the outcome to be. We can give all that up. We can reduce our stress levels like immensely, right? Think about this. When we react to everything that is said to us, our blood pressure may rise. We may get upset. Learning to manage our emotions can be a very positive area of personal growth and learning. If we look at it that way, if we realize that our emotions are driving our moods and driving us to be upset and raising our blood pressure and making us sick, why allow that? We have a choice on how we react to things. So focusing on the big picture, instead of being dragged into all this drama trauma, I have a video here on YouTube about that too, with the person that you care for, with your siblings, with other family members, with anybody. If you can learn to manage those emotions, then you're going to feel more in control of life. 
the more that you do that, you'll be able to recover from all these unexpected situations, from the call from mom and dad at 3 a.m. say, I've fallen and I can't get up, or I don't know how to use the remote again. I'm on channel, whatever, and the TV's not working, and you're at work getting ready to go into a meeting, right? <laughs> you just want to, like, scream because you've actually written out a list of how to use the remote control, and you've taped it to the television at your parents' home. I know some of you do this. It would be something that I would do, right? Parents don't read the notes. They don't read the list. So in all of this emotional management and in anything that we do to be caregivers, you may have heard me talk about levels or floors in another video in a comparison of first to third graders and the difference that in their learning and their experiences, right? So those levels follow us throughout life based on our life experiences and work experiences and relationships and how we manage our emotions. All of us are at different levels or on different floors in the building. So when your responsibilities start to bump up against your capacity, you're hitting the ceiling of the floor that you're on. And you're prevented from doing what you want, which means that you can choose to remain stuck. You can keep bumping against that ceiling, getting the headaches, getting the stomach aches, not sleeping at night, having health problems, or you can say, I'm going to embrace change, I'm going to think differently, I'm going to learn and I'm going to level up to the next level so I can let all this stuff down here go. So when others stress you out, when they frustrate you, insult you, express an opinion that you don't agree with or make you feel less capable than you are, just step back a minute and think and realize that one, if you take all that on, you're giving your power away to another person. Do you really want to do that? But number two, realize that this person is at a different level than you are based on their life experiences. And they have different beliefs and different ways they do things. And that's okay. It doesn't make them wrong and you right. It doesn't make you wrong and them right. It only means you're on a different level. You're on a different path. We are all on different levels. We are all on different paths. So that way we can release criticism and we cannot take words or situations personally. We can just kind of watch and see that it's happening. And instead of reacting and blowing up like we might have done in the past, we can just kind of learn to let it go. It doesn't matter anymore. Not going to affect me. Different levels. That simple. Number four, the last one. If you keep score, Stop keeping score. How does this happen in caregiving? Well, as a caregiver with a lot of responsibility, you might feel resentful if you keep giving and giving and giving and doing, and nobody steps in to help you, your parent doesn't say thank you, nobody's expressing appreciation, nobody's saying, oh, you're such a wonderful person for sacrificing your life and giving up everything and not getting married. And, oh, that job you wanted, you gave that up too. And, oh, the, you wanted to go to school? Well, that didn't happen either. If you keep thinking of those things, you're keeping score. And in some cases, your elderly parents can contribute and help and be appreciative for a while. But when dementia and Alzheimer's step in, all that goes out the door. Now, you might be saying, well, Pamela, you're telling me to stop keeping score and I'm giving up all this stuff. Well, that's the problem. You've hit the capacity level. You've hit the constraint level. Recognize that your life is way out of balance. Stop keeping score. Believe that you and your efforts have value. You get out of life what you put into it. So here's the thing. If the rewards of being a caregiver are more of a drain on your life and your happiness and your health and your career and your family and your children, then you have hit that ceiling and you have to decide if you're going to stay there or if you're going to change your focus, change the way that you think, move away from caregiving without feeling guilty and recognize that it's time for you to live a different way. If you are experiencing this gap between responsibility and capacity, think of how you can live a life 
where you have the freedom and the choice to do more of what you want. That can mean saying, you know what, I am positive, I'm looking forward to the future, I'm going to do all these things. On any given day, honestly, how many of us say that? Or how many of us think that we become so overwhelmed by all the things we have to do? So shifting our minds from this place of limitation and caregiving, and I hate doing this, and I don't even like my parents anymore, or I don't like my spouse anymore, right? We have to shift to a mindset of choice and freedom and find a way to make that happen. And that can mean letting go of all these unpleasant experiences that happen when caregiving responsibilities take over our life. It can mean finding a better balance where we feel happy with what we're doing and happy being a little bit of a caregiver, not a full-time caregiver anymore, or where we don't feel drained or we're constantly worrying about everything, right? Having this freedom of choice or knowing that we have this freedom in our mind can mean closing all these gaps that make us miserable so that we can continue our journey of learning and becoming more open-minded and less opinionated and looking at more options so that we can move up to this next level instead of continually hitting that ceiling and feeling like we are banging our heads against the wall. So, in your life, gain some insight. Take some time. Identify the gap between your level of responsibility and your capacity and the constraints so that you can figure out the path to choose your next steps and change your life. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I'm a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. I thank you for being here again. Please click below to like this video, follow my channel, comment so that other people can find their way here. Go over to my website. There is plenty of free information there. It is PamelaDWilson.com. Also, if you are looking for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, you can complete the Contact Me form there. If you are a group or a corporation looking for a speaker, you can also contact me there. Let me know how I can help you, where I can show up to speak. Again, I thank you so much for being here. I will see you all again soon in another video.